you may or may not be able to see it but right in here i uh used a square and a, a ruler and drew some lines basically a rectangle to cut that rotted portion of the wood out did the same thing on the other one what i'm going to do is cut that out and then cut a similar piece out of newer wood and then i'm gonna put that in there and the idea behind this is one i don't want to leave that rot there and because the way i look at it is if i leave that rot there it's just going to continue to rot and then also because now it's weaker there it's going to continue to flex and as it flexes it's probably just going to eventually break so by putting a new piece in there i think that new piece going across there is going to keep that piece from flexing as much as long as I make sure that the cut is nice and tight and that it's secured really well. So I will use some glue nails and screws to keep it there and I will be doing that on both of them. So now I'm going to cut this piece out and then cut out my new piece that will go in there. All right, so I've got my pieces cut out. There's one and there's two. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to make the new pieces as uh, close to this as possible but I gotta be careful because I gotta take into account the blade space of the cut on both ends so I need to add about an eighth of an inch down there and on the bottom to make sure that it's level so it'll be an eighth on the end but only a sixteenth on the bottom so I'm going to go cut out my new pieces of wood now. Take these out. I used a circular saw, which was really difficult to do at a side angle with very limited space. It would have been preferred to be directly in front of the circular saw or to the right rear of it as I went along. But still got it done. But I did have to use the reciprocating saw to touch up some end pieces that didn't want to come off and that's because I was using a circular saw so there you go all right so here are my filler pieces this one is a little bit loose sitting in there and it's sticking up a little bit but I can just use a hand planer to get it the same as the rest of it and then this one is pretty tight and I like it that it's like that now I'll just hammer it in and I will be putting some exterior wood glue it's waterproof on the ends and on the bottom and then I will be putting wood screws and deck screws in it to keep it in place. Got my replacement pieces in place and both of them. I've got five three and a half inch screws buried into the wood for a reason and then i've also got two three and a half screws on the ends going diagonally into the new piece of wood on both of them so one diagonally here and then these three and a halfs are going down into the pre-existing board and then uh what i also did is made sure that I jacked these up level where they're supposed to be uh, before putting them in because there was quite a bit of uh, dip in the where these two spots are. And then I also glued everything and then I used a uh, planer, hand planer, to get this as level as possible across so there's like no, no protrusions that are going to make one of the deck boards look like it's popped up out of place. So... That part's done. Now I'm just gonna add my scabs on. I'm going to use two three foot long pieces uh, centered on the uh, center of where this replacement piece went in here. And I'm only gonna do a scab on one side. I'm not gonna do both sides because I just don't want more surface area underneath the deck boards because then that means that there's gonna be more water that's gonna be sitting underneath the deck boards. Even though it won't impact the deck boards, it will affect the structure boards underneath the deck and I want to try to avoid that so I don't want to create a big surface area for that to happen so I'll put one scab on the here and another scab over here and then I'm going with three feet that way 
it's uh, extended well past the area that's uh, affected. Got my replacement pieces in here and here and then I also put my three foot scabs in and I put about 20 screws on one side well I put a total of 20 screws in each of these boards on both sides so not only was it being pulled into the other board the uh, screws were put in from the other side to pull this board into the other board as well because uh, I've seen it sometimes where you just put the screws on one side and the board will move back and forth this way and it'll work out this way but if you put screws on both sides it tends not to do that now i need to uh, start working on permanently leveling the center of this deck we got some temporary things here but I, i'm gonna have to level all three of these so what i'm gonna do is tamp the ground down put some more aggregate put some of these uh, concrete blocks in and then i'm gonna put posts down from each one and then secure these 16 footers to the post to basically keep the center from uh, continuing to sag because it is pretty bad in fact this ground's actually pretty soft because as i've gotten in and out of here and had the level on there i would look at the level again and see that the uh, the the bricks and everything started going down a little bit so we got some work to do to get this uh, ground to be solid because uh, i don't want to I mean, it's going to naturally do it over time, but I'd rather do it. Uh, it doesn't sag at all. I did say the very next thing I was going to do was add the post in down here, level the ground out, add some aggregate, put the bricks down, or concrete blocks, and then put my post, connect them to these 16-foot uh, boards. But uh, I ended up changing that. Uh, because I thought it would be important to make sure I put these spacers back in and what I did is I corrected the spacing so that the spacing in here is the sp same spacing down here and on the opposite end. I believe when this deck was originally put together that the spacers they put in they didn't spend too much time actually making sure they were correct as evidenced by that piece down there. There was like a quarter inch gap between that board and this 16 footer right here and it's only got one nail in it one of the issues when they put these spacers in you would have thought when they put the spacers in that they would have ensured that the wood was cut straight which it evidently was not cut straight uh, because before i put it on the circular saw i cut the end pieces and when I cut them, they were very crooked. So I don't know what they used to cut them. But there were a lot of gaps in this wood. And I think because of not cutting them straight, it actually caused uh, these boards to cup quite a bit. So I had to use these C-clamps to press the boards together when I put these spacers in to try to close up the cupping. So they're actually not as bad there used to be a lot of uh, spaces down in here where up at the top it was tight and then at the bottom it had a huge gap you can see there's a little bit of cupping on this one in the center but it was a lot worse until i put the clamps on it and then this one is not too bad so now what i'm going to do is come up with a way to raise this up and get it level well it will have a quarter inch decline from this end to this end but i want to make sure that from there to there is is level that and that are level and then these pieces in the center are level with there and there uh, because if it's if I put my level on here and they're all touching, then I'm good to go. If there's a gap underneath the level, then uh, I need to make some adjustments to fix it. Down underneath the deck, all the paint came off the bottom of the wall on the house. So I'm going to dig all that out, dry it up, and then uh, paint it. There's the stairs, and then as you come up the stairs, there's a post there, a post there, and a post there. 
may seem like a uh, overkill but this is where the greatest amount of sag was in the deck previously so what I did is uh, we had an old cabin on the property that we took down and we're trying to repurpose the majority of the wood and this is from the old deck don't know how old the wood is but I did use some uh, cut and treat it's a, basically a wood preservative wherever I cut it so on the top and the bottom and then in some cases uh, the wood looked pretty raw so I just covered the whole thing and then I've got them slanted at 30 degrees uh, just so any water that does come down through the deck boards will roll off rather than sitting on top of it so that's where I am with that the deck is flat now level well it does have a decline going out away from the house just a, i think it's about a quarter of an inch or just slightly less than a quarter of an inch so the angle that's down there on that end is now the angle that's here in front of the door i took the wood rod out that was right here it was caused by a nail that uh, apparently accelerated the wood rot based on probably the nail itself oxidizing or screw that was oxidizing so I cut that out and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece this piece right here um, I'm not going to put it here permanently because this is already uh, three inches wide I don't want to make it four and a half because then that's more surface area so I'm going to put this here temporary just to block it off and then I'm going to bondo that in and then pull this off fixing where this wood rot was serves no purpose other than just to close it up it's still gonna support the stairs in the in the deck because it's got this uh backing board here that it's nailed and screwed to and then also it's still got uh six inches below so uh, but what i am going to do is i'm going to stick some random screws in this So when I put my Mondo in it, when I put the Bondo in it, it does have something to hold on to. Because what it could do is just loosen up and fall out. But by putting the screws in there, it'll give something for it to hold on to and keep it there. this piece of wood on here get the screws in there and then I've also got this painters tape on this wood just to make it easier to take it off and uh, so it doesn't the wood doesn't stay stuck to the bondo next put the bondo in I'm just about at the point where I can put the deck boards down but before I do that uh, because this uh, the pattern of where the screws are going to go are is going to change drastically uh, because of the Trex boards not necessarily screwing through the tops so the holes will be a different pattern so I'm hoping I can use this cut and treat I'm just going to go across all the tops work my way from the house out and just apply this um, and hope that it fills some of these nail holes and uh, hopefully helps with uh, preventing rot in the nail holes. So that's what I'm going to do right now. This stuff does have the greenish tint to make it look like a 
regular treated wood. Although when it dries, it doesn't even make that much of a difference. The wood does seem to be uh, soaking it up really good, so hopefully that's a sign of good things. About five minutes after I put the cut and treat on all of these boards, and it wasn't even on the radar, about five minutes after I finished, a uh, downpour came through. So, not 100% sure that this got to completely dry, and I'm not sure if it just all got rinsed off or not, but anyway. Moving on to what I originally came out here to do.